Oh, it's been a long day. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Um, started work at about 4.30 a.m. this morning, and uh, it's just now 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So had kind of a long day. Uh, actually, it wasn't that long. It wasn't too bad. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we did with our, our firewall project this morning. We did uh, some trunking. Um, so I was going to talk about what we did. Is basically, we, um, we had copper connections from our firewall, you know, three different copper ports. Um, the three ports that we worked on were the inside, our WAN. And when I say WAN, I mean the connection between us and the county. Um, so we, we just refer to that as the WAN between the county and the hospital as opposed to the WAN that the, the county sets up to carry our, our internet traffic and, and the WAN traffic. Um, so when I use the term WAN, I'm talking about a specific circuit between us and the county. Um, and our inside connections. So inside connections, WAN, and outside connections are what we worked on. So I came up with this little drawing here. I will share my screen so you can see it. Let me get all this stuff out of the way, including all this zoomy stuff, which is in my way. There we go. So there, I hope you can see that OK. Um, so here's what we've got. These guys in the middle, these, these are going to be my two Palo Alto Networks firewalls. We've got a, uh, we call them the PAN, uh, pal, uh, primary firewall and the secondary firewall. And the way we work, the way it's connected is we have edge users out here on these edge switches. We've got the users coming in here, they come in through the core, they come in through these uh, copper switches here, they're just top of rack switches in the rack where these two firewalls are. And I didn't note it here on the drawing, but these two firewalls are in two separate geographic locations on our campus. Uh, the primary firewall is in our data center, the secondary uh, firewall is across campus in our MDF. Um, so this is the way it was. It's it was connected prior. Is uh, you know so edge users will come in from their switches. They'll come into the core. Um, our inside WAN and, and outside VLANs are tagged on these uplinks to the core. So the users would come into the inside WAN, inside LAN. Um, hit the copper switch. Hit the firewall. If they're going to go outside, then they'll go out the outside interface of the firewall here, back into the same copper switch, back up through this uh, trunk to the uh, core switch, out to our WAN switch, which basically serves as our ed switch just prior to um, the county, the ISP services that the county provides us. Um, there's two of those that are redundant. One is AT&T and one is Comcast. So depending on which one's primary, um, you know, I didn't show this too. Let me show this other line is these guys are connected to just like that. So um, really all depends, depending on if this firewall is active, then it's going to be just like I showed you. They're going to come in, they're going to come, come in the inside, go out the outside, go back to the same core, hit this WAN switch. If AT&T is active, then they're going to go out right through this WAN switch here. If Comcast is active, then they'll go across this uh, trunk between these two switches. And these are also in the same locations as the pans. So everything above, everything above, uh, let's do, let me make <laughs> the brown line. Everything above the brown line, uh, that's all in the data center. Everything below the brown line is in the MBF. So, um, it's kind of complicated the way we've got it set. So they could come through this this firewall, come to this WAN switch, and theoretically could go down to this WAN switch before they go out. That's why everything's set up today, um, prior to today. See, I'm tired. What we wanted to do is we wanted to make some changes. So what we did is we created a couple of uh, they call on the on Palo Alto, they call it an aggregated Ethernet circuit. Um, Cisco World, they might call it a trunk. Um, in uh, Nets, Nets, uh, Nets uh, 
man, I am so tired. Extreme networks world. Um, we would just call it an LACP trunk. Um, so what we did is we set up um, we used two new ports, and these these were fiber. We we took a fiber from the primary firewall to the number one WAN switch for inside, and then we took so one one interface went over to here, and then another inner inside interface we sent down to here, and so these right here we set up as one trunk. That was the inside and the WAN. So inside and WAN were both on this. So let me make a little note of that so you can see what's going across these. So tagged on these ports were the inside and WAN traffic down to the county. Um, then we created two more. We, created two, we went two more interfaces on the firewall here. Two more fibers, and we brought one to here. And we brought one to here. And those also became, we set those up as an LACP trunk. And that was strictly our outside traffic. And then we did the same thing down here. So a um, couple more ports for the, uh, we set up a, a aggregated ethernet to outside here. And here. And then same thing for inside. Inside here. And inside here. And again, the, these were these were an LACP trunk. These were LACP trunk. And we, we created an aggregated Ethernet group. On the switch side, we created a, a LACP group between this port up here and this port here. So that became one. We, we set up a, a, a trunk on those two ports. So you can do it across multiple switches with Extreme. You can do it in Cisco too, I'm sure. Um, it's called an MLT, multi-link multi trunk. Um, so we set this trunk up here. So this aggregated Ethernet would connect across both these switches. And then we simply came over here and we got rid of all of these. We moved these out. In fact, what we did is move all of this. We removed this whole switch from the equation. So now, when the users wanted to go out, what they had to do, um, so the user's traffic, they'd come into the core, then they would have to come out here to the WAN switch, go to the firewall, firewall decide where they want to go, and it'll either send them out the WAN, which would technically send them back out the same, the, the same interface it came in on, just ta different tag, or they'd go out to outside. And that, that was internet only. So these red lines are, are internet only. So th this green green line here, we had inside and WAN tagged on, on these links and outside only tagged on these links, these red links. Um, the reason we wanted to do that, because before, anytime we would reboot WAN 1 or WAN 2, we would get um, about a two minute outage on our firewall. And I talked about this before. Extreme can't figure it out, we can't figure it out. And you guys have been real helpful sending me suggestions of things to check. We've checked everything. I've given your suggestions to Extreme. They've, they've followed up on them and nothing panned out. So we did this this morning. So now let's say that this switch right here, um, for 
for whatever reason, this switch goes down. Boom, he's gone. So yeah, Jews will come in here, they'll come to the core. These two core switches are, are connected to each other. I'm not showing it here, but they are. They'll come into the core. They'll go to the surviving WAN switch. Since we set this, this aggregated ethernet up, one goes to this switch, one goes to the other switch. This link is still up and the, the, the pan firewall, the secondary, actually the primary, still sees this link right here as surviving. This link here may be down, but this link still survives. So the pan firewall primary, he stays the primary. It doesn't fail over to the secondary. The same thing, if this guy fails, Boom, he's gone. Well, the pan primary, he notices this, this link went down, the green link went down, but this green link up here is still up. So he stays active as the primary. So what if this happens? Well, then this guy stay, this guy takes over and um, he can use whichever link he, he was using before. <laughs> he can use either one. So let's say that firewall is gone and let's say this switch dies for whatever reason. Actually, no, that's not, that's not a good scenario. Let's say the whole data center is gone. So everything above the brown line, remember, is a data center. So we'll delete that. So let's say the whole data center is taken out. That's, that's the core that's up in the data center. Boom, it's gone too. So like I said, the... Um, these edge switches are, are both connected to the core and the cores are connected to each other. So edge us the users come in, edge switch. They come over here to the, uh, to the WAN switch because it's the only one that's surviving. They go into the secondary pan and they can still, you know, they can go back out the inside, back out the WAN or out, out the outside. Everything is still surviving. So uh, we, we tested that all this morning and uh, it worked pretty good. So we we're real pleased with that. Um, and the, the cutover went pretty good. We were a little nervous about it, um, but really there was, there was no huge issue. We didn't even bother disconnecting the, uh, the uh, copper links that were right here. They're still connected to the copper switch. Um, we just downed them on the pan on the two firewalls. And so it's just down and not doing anything. Um, they're unconfigured. So um, yeah, the vendor came up with a pretty snazzy way to do it. Is he, basically he took a configuration snapshot from our firewall, loaded it into his lab firewall, made all the configuration changes that he needed to make, sent the configuration back to us. We loaded it into the secondary, committed it, and then did a failover from the primary to the secondary, made sure traffic was flowing over all these links. Um, once we were sure that it was, then we forced a configuration copy from the secondary over to the primary. Once that was done, we failed from the secondary back to the primary, and boom, I think the whole thing took about 15 minutes, and we were done. We didn't have any major hiccups, so that's what we did today, That's and that's what we look like now, and we're now in much better shape um, as my... Uh, CIO put it, we hit uh, network nirvana today as far as uh, redundancy. So um, we can now reboot any switch in our core. So we've got four core switches. We can reboot any one of these and it won't affect the edge users and it won't affect our internet connectivity. We can reboot either, either a firewall. It won't affect internet connectivity or edge user experience at all. We can reboot this WAN switch, this WAN switch. Um, out here beyond the county ISP, we've got a couple of disaster recovery switches in a, in a disaster recovery data center that, that is connected in. We can reboot either one of those. Um, it won't affect anything. So we're really in good shape as far as being able to upgrade our switches and uh, do firmware updates as far as the core infrastructure. Now, out here on the edge, uh, we still got the same problem. If we got to update firmware there, you know, use it that. That particular closet's going to be down, but at least we can do it closet by closet. We don't have to do the whole hospital at once. We can just affect, you know, one department at a time. So, all right, enough talking. That's that's what we did today. That's um, 
that's the bulk of it. And uh, it was pretty successful and we're really happy with where we are now. So coming up, uh, what we're going to do now is move our routing from our old legacy core, where it's running on a single uh, Interesis, legacy Interesis S8 series switch. And we're gonna move it over to our fabric core where it will be distributed among the four switches. So losing any one switch won't cause us to lose our routes. So that's a good deal. And that's gonna happen Saturday. We've already few, moved a few layer three VLANs over and uh, there wasn't any downtime um, that I could perceive being a user on the edge. You know, when he he stopped, uh, shut down the layer three interface on the, the old core and brought the layer three up on the new core. And it was, I think maybe I dropped a ping, one ping, two pings maybe. So really, really wasn't a bad deal. So. That's what we're doing this Saturday. And then the bulk, I'll say 99% of our DR project is complete. Um, the last thing we got to do is just move our remaining closets off the legacy cores onto the new fabric cores and we'll be done. So uh, culmination of a year and a half project. I can't wait to see this thing done. So that's all I got this week, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for your great comments. And if you guys are still butthurt about ubiquity, I'm sorry, that's too bad. Um, anyway, have a great week. If you like what you saw, uh, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell if you so desire, and uh, we'll see you next time. God bless. And where is it, where is it?